Okay, we're going to do a quick review on factoring. Um, just go over special case polynomials and when the coefficient in front is larger than 1. So let's do that first. We're going to do 6x squared minus 19x minus 7. So you can do that one of two ways. First is BFDs, where you borrow, factor, divide, and simplify. And the other is x factor. Again, I don't care which way you factor as long as you do it correctly and can do it quickly and accurately. So, okay, so with BFDs, you're going to start with your equation 6x squared minus 19x minus 7. Pull your a value to your c value. Multiply that, borrow it from the front, so minus 42. Then factor, so you have x minus 21, and x plus 2. Then whatever you borrow, you have to divide back out. So you have x minus 21 over 6. Divide both of those by 6. Then you must simplify. So you would get x minus 7 halves and x plus 1 third. Then if it does not simplify to a um, whole number, then you just swing that denominator out to the front. So you would get <coughs> 2x minus 7 and 3x plus 1. Okay. If we do an x factor, put your b value at the top, your ac value at the bottom. So you would have negative 19 up here, negative 42 at the bottom. On your lines to the side you have your a value which is 6 and your variable. Then you're going to factor those two so again you get negative 21 and 2. You need to reduce both of those before you do anything else. So this would change to a 3 and a negative 7. This would change to a 3 and a 1. If that reduces to a 1, you must keep it there. So now your factors are exactly what you see. 3x minus 7. Sorry, that should be a 2. 2x two minus 7. And 3x plus 1. Okay, the other type I want to review with you really quickly is what you did the worksheet on, which was special case polynomials, um, factoring those. So if you have 4x squared minus 40x plus 25, anytime you're looking at any trinomial, I want you to look at the first term and the last term and see if those are perfect squares. 4x squared is a perfect square, as is 25. So we're going to try and factor that and see if that works. If there is a middle term here, then you definitely have two signs that are the same, either both positive or both negative. Whatever that sign is, is going to tell you what they are. So in this case, we would have both negative. Now you're simply taking the square root of the front and the square root of the back. So square root of 4x squared is 2x. Square root of 25 is 5. Let's verify that the middle term is going to add up. We have negative, oh, this should have been a negative 20. Yeah, we should have started with a negative 20x. Um, so we would have had negative 10 negative 10x and negative 10x, which when you total them up is negative 20x. Okay, I apologize. Make sure you started with a negative 20x there in the middle. I'm trying to do it too quickly in my head. Okay. Then, if you have a special case polynomial that looks like 16x squared minus 49, again, you're still looking at first term, last term. Now there's no middle term. When there's no middle term, you know that your signs are going to be one of each because they're going to cancel each other out. You're still looking at whether they are square roots or not, if they're perfect squares. These are. So you would have the square root of 16x is 4x, square root of 49 is 7, so you would end up with 4x plus 7 and 4x minus 7. Okay, and that's your review. Thanks. Good job.